here's what I need to do today. I've got like four loads of laundry to fold. The kitchen needs cleaning. I should probably mow the lawn and the car definitely needs some love. I've also got a 45 minute run and a weightlifting session. I've got about five hours worth of video editing to do for clients and other YouTubers. On top of that, I'd really like to spend some time with my family, with my partner and my stepson. I'd love to make us a nice dinner. I'd love to play some Among Us because he's obsessed with that game do bedtime stories, and I'd really like to be able to get myself to bed by like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. That's just a normal day for me. In, in fact, it's been a very normal week for me. Here's what I've done. Monday, I worked at the run shop. Tuesday and Wednesday, I picked up dailies on TV show. Today, Thursday, and tomorrow, Friday, I'm in the video editing cave. And then Saturday and Sunday, I'm second shooting two different weddings. On top of that, I run and weightlift every single day. I know it doesn't look like it because I'm a scrawny boy, but hey, I do it. I'm not alone in this. And I would say that every small creator that you follow in the photo and video space has a schedule something like this. Woof. So being this busy, all in the name of trying to make financial ends meet, it begs the question, like, where is the time for this whole YouTube thing? And how the hell can you make time to create like high quality content with this kind of hustle? Honestly, I, I, I don't know. I actually don't know. And that's part of why I'm making this video, I think, to reach out to some other creators and hear like, how you doing it? It's not like there's zero time to make videos. There's just very little. And that's why I think there's so many creators in this like photo video space that you see just like doing gear reviews from their kitchen, like I'm doing right now, <laughs> you know, standing in front of a camera in a place where they have access to all the time to try and make something to put out there. It's not because they're not capable of creating like beautiful cinematic work. I think it's just because when you're at a certain size of channel, the return on investment just isn't there until you reach a certain level. The obvious argument here being like, well, unless you're creating great work, you're not going to get to that place where you're big enough to be able to see the return on investment. True, fair enough. The thing is like gear reviews, tech, talking about all that stuff, it's really easy. It's really simple. You, you get a piece of equipment and you, you test it out a little bit and you talk about what you liked and disliked and then you put the review out. Gear reviews are, are kind of rewarded because a lot of people watch them and uh, they're easy to make and it's easy to get views on them, usually, not always, but but certainly I would say most of the, the high view counts that people have on their videos come from gear videos rather than the more like cinematic, beautiful, unique videos or the more philosophical videos or anything like that. Plus here's something interesting. Ask any of your favorite creators in the photo and video space about what it's like when they try and add more like cinematic short film-esque portions to those gear reviews. You know, when they wanna show you like, here's what this camera is capable of and they make this like beautiful little short that they put into the video, everyone skips ahead until they get back to the review. It's like they're watching like an advertisement or a sponsored piece where they just kind of move forward. It's true, honestly, like ask these creators, you can see it in the analytics. And anytime I've tried to do something like that, it's the same thing. So it kind of makes you feel like, what's the point? I do think there's kind of two reasons why people skip this. One is that you're looking for information, not inspiration usually when you're looking at a gear review. You're just trying to see, you know, with the camera, how goes the autofocus? What is the image quality like? What's the IBIS like? Rolling shutter, all that stuff. You're not looking for inspiration by seeing this like beautiful cinematic video. Okay, fine. The other reason though, and I think we as creators have to kind of cop to this, is that it doesn't matter how beautiful we make something. Like if you make a gorgeous three minute little short and the acting is terrible, it's it's hard to watch. And, and I, I fully, like me, all of us, anyone who's doing this kind of thing, we probably need to invest in some acting lessons if we're gonna do stuff like that because it is just like rough. Like I, I see some pretty atrocious stuff, myself included, myself included. And so I don't blame people for wanting to skip over some of the like cringy shit that we put out there. We're not nearly as funny or interesting or cool as we think we are when we're making those things. And I think a lot of them fall flat. So if the algorithm favors consistency and relative quantity of videos being produced, then what do you do when you only have like two to four hours a week to, to put out a video? You have to do everything and get it out there because you, it's better off to make something than nothing. And we get caught in this thinking that like, oh man, like I have to put something out. And that maybe is true, maybe it's not, but it's certainly the way that creators start to think over time and it can be really stressful. Ultimately, I think it leads to a lot of us just being like, what, what's the point, you know? And, and that sounds really dreary and kind of like 
a bummer that it's like you put all this time and effort into building a channel and getting yourself monetized and then you get there and then you're like I don't even know what to do with this anymore because the amount of time I have to put into this and I'm making like 30 bucks a month or something like it, it, there, there's no there's no way it makes sense right financially for you to put more time and effort into this unless you're looking at it long term and you're saying like well if I make good enough videos then I can maybe get to the point where I can just do this full time. And that's really what people are shooting for on this platform. The problem is you got bills to pay. And if you have to put 20 hours into a video to make it what you need, that's 20 hours you can't be doing work that's actually putting food on the table for you and your family. So you're kind of caught in this loop and it's really hard to, uh, to feel like there's a way out of that. But I think there's a different way of looking at it. See, you could look at it and say like, what's the point? Or you could look at it and say, what do I really want to be making? Because what's the point is something that you're probably going to ask forever. Like, what's the point of this? Like, we're just putting up silly little things on YouTube. And the point becomes that it, it is how you make money. And so that's how you survive. And that's why a lot of people get caught in a different loop when they're actually making good money on this platform of like, oh, like I got to get the videos out. I got to get the views. I, like that becomes stressful in its own way. But if you're a small creator like me, I think you you could really be debilitated by that question, what's the point? So let's put that aside for a minute and let's just think about the question, what do I really want to be making? Because if you can get some clarity on what you really want to be making, then you kind of have no choice but to make it and to put out the things you're truly capable of. If I can put aside the idea that I'm like, I have to put out a video every week or that I have to play the algorithm game or I have to create the catchy YouTube titles or whatever, and I can just say, what do I really want to be out there as a showcase of what I can do? I can create better work. And when you're doing that, that's just so much more fulfilling because the reality is being on YouTube in this small space, like there's so little to lose and so much to gain if you just do the things that feel authentic to you. I think that's something that I got caught up in wondering about way too much over this past little while and it's stopped me from working on those creative endeavors. So algorithm be damned and honestly subscribers be damned if you're anything like me in this space you're a creator and you're having these feelings then let this video serve you in the same way that it's trying to serve me as a stark reminder in black and white that life is what you make of it and that this whole thing we're doing here with youtube or social media or whatever it's entirely what you want it to be so get out there and make the things you want to make and i'm going to try and do that too Bye.